And the question is now that the bill be read a second time. And I give the call to the honourable member for Wills. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. And it's a great pleasure to talk about uh, this bill because it's talking about space to boldly go where no one has gone before. That's what Australian astronomers and scientists have been doing for decades, reaching out to the stars with their eyes, with their ears, with the instruments that they use um, to ask the most deep and most meaningful questions that human beings have always asked. Uh, are we alone? What's out there? Uh, what are these wonders out there in the universe that light up the sky, a sky that all of us have looked up to, that starry night uh, in Australia particularly, that clear, those clear starry nights uh, that Australians have looked up into as kids and adults and asked those questions and dreamed those dreams about other worlds and other places in our universe and asked those fundamental questions that go to the very meaning of life and our place in it. And therefore, uh, the work that Australian astronomers do, both amateur and professional, is so, are so important, um, not just uh, for the scientific community but for humanity as well. Um, we know, uh, Deputy Speaker, that this bill will abolish the astro astro astronomic Astronomical Observatory, the Australian astro Astronomical Observatory, and allow for its function to be transitioned to two consortiums to manage uh, the functions of the body. And the legislation will also give effect to the 2017-18 budget measure, access to world-leading astronomy infrastructure, which saw Australia sign up a strategic partnership with the European Southern Observatory. And in terms of optical astronomy, Deputy Speaker, the scientific community has been asking government for a number of years to explore entering into a partnership with the European Southern Observatory in order to gain access to the La Silla Paranal Observatory in Chile, uh, which is quite significant. And until recently, this access has been beyond the fiscal capability of the Australian government. But recently, the ESO approached the Australian government with an offer of a 10-year strategic partnership at a cost of $119 million. So access to the telescopes in Chile, the observatory in Chile, will give Australia's optical astro astronomical community access to the eight-metre telescope they have been long asking for. However, all of this requires changes to the existing act that will close down the Australian Astronomical Observatory. And I want to state clearly, Deputy Speaker, that Labor will support this legislation, but we will do so somewhat reluctantly. Uh, we, we support the views expressed by those in the astronomical community that the best way to expand Australia's optical astronomy industry is through a partnership with the European Southern Observatory, though approval or otherwise of this legislation will not necessarily impact on the government proceeding with the ESO strategic partnership, which has already been signed and funded through the 2017-18 budget. Labor does understand that this legislation is part of the process of partnering with the ESO and therefore our support is necessary. Furthermore, failure to support this bill will result in the Anglo-Australian Telescope the AAT, um, not to be confused with the Administrative Appeals Tribunal, and the Australian Astronomical Observatory, the AAO laboratory, laboratories in North Ryde, being unable to transfer to the university sector, resulting in their closure in July 2020 and the loss of up to 53 jobs. We reluctantly support this bill because it is a stopgap and not a solution. This bill does not resolve the funding cliff that has long bedeviled many areas of scientific endeavour in this country, but merely pushes it out by another 10 years. It should also be noted, Deputy Speaker, that when the ESO strategic partnership expires, the Commonwealth will, will need to decide whether to become a full member of the ESO, seek access for Australian science to another telescope or discontinue this area of scientific leadership our country, our country has long enjoyed and excelled at. It will be a real shame if Australia ever discontinues this area of scientific leadership because currently the Commonwealth works to maintain Australia's position of leadership in astronomy. The Department of Innovation, Industry and Research has two broad groups that manage Australia's government astronomy assets in partnership with the research community. The Australia Square Kilometre Array Office, which is managing our engagement with the construction of the Square Kilometre Array, the SKA, part of which is being built in Western Australia, the other half in South, of South Africa. This will become the world's most advanced radio telescope observatory. The AAO, which since 2010 has managed to access the Anglo-Australian Telescope and maintained our national optical instrumentation capability based in North Ryde, Sydney. As stated previously, this legislation will abolish the AAO as a division of the department on 1 July 2018, along with all AAO governance structures, and it will allow the transfer of necessary assets to external entities, in this case the two university-based consortiums. And these are one led by the Australian National University, uh, which transfers operations of the AAT to a consortium made up of several universities, led by the ANU, across Australia, including but not limited to Monash University, the University of New South Wales, the University of Queensland, the University of Tasmania 
and the University of Western Australia. The second consortium uh, is with the Macquarie University and the Australian Astron Astronomy Limited Consortium, which takes responsibility for the establishment of a national optical instrumentation capability and for the further development of the world-class instrumentation functions of the Australian Astronomical Observatory. When constructed, the Anglo-Australian Telescope was the most advanced in the world. Its construction and operation granted the nation's scientists access to an advanced facility and allowed the development of advanced scientific and industrial techniques uh, in Australia. While it is now 40 years old, 44 years old, the uh, Australian Astronomical Telescope, the Anglo Astronomical Telescope, I should say, is still an important part of the nation's research infrastructure. Labor is relieved uh, that the assets of the AAO will be maintained for the next seven years. However, their future beyond that date are still not resolved. The question of what happens beyond that date is key because maintaining and, and strengthening Australia's position at the front line of astronomical research requires access to world-class facilities. And the next generation of these facilities, Deputy Speaker, needed to make the next major, dis needed to make the ne next major discoveries about our universe are of such a scale and complexity that they require multinational partnerships to fund and build. That's just necessary to do that kind of work. And Australia needs to ask itself what it wants from optical astronomy. Does Australia want to lead the industry? Do we want to be at the front line of research? Do we want our scientists to make discoveries about our universe? The partnership with the ESO gives Australian opt optical astronomers access to one of the most advanced telescopes in the world at the La Silla Paranal Observatory in Chile, as I said, but leaves us floating in, direct in a direct directionless in a vacuum after it expires. <coughs> Australian astronomy has already begun the transition from a national research infrastructure, a portfolio that's mid-scale, to, uh, to Australian-owned facilities, to partnership in multinational billion-dollar landmark facilities. And we are playing a critical role in two of the world's biggest billion-dollar astronomy projects. As I said, the Square Kilometre Array, which will be partly built in Australia with local industry and regional engagement, and the new giant Magellan Telescope which will be the first in a new class of extremely large telescopes and for which Australia is building key instrumentation. Both the GMT and the SKA present, uh, SKA present an extreme leap in telescope size. The last time a size leap of this scale happened, we actually discovered planets uh, around other stars outside of our solar system. We discovered the supermassive black hole in the centre of our galaxy and evidence that the universe was actually accelerating or is accelerating. So in many respects the future is bright, but there needs to be sustained maintenance of effort and long-term security for our scientists. And the Commonwealth European Southern Observatory Partnership provides for maintenance of effort for the next 10 years, but there is no certainty beyond that. Before 2028, the Commonwealth will again will be obliged to decide whether to become a full member of the ESO or invest in the new GMT, which will be online by that time. So in many respects, Deputy Speaker, at best this is a medium-term stay of execution. Yet again, Australian science is faced with replacing one funding cliff with a new funding cliff. So what does Australia get as a result of prolonging the inevitable with respect to the funding cliff? The cost to the Commonwealth of this partnership is $119 million over the decade from 2017 to or $26.1 million over the forward estimates from 2017-18 to 2020-21. Improved access to these facilities has been a common refrain amongst astronomers for many years. The decadal plan for astronomy produced, the Academy of Sci produced by the Academy of Science calls for access to eight-metre class optical astronomy infrastructure, which is currently not available in Australia. The same plan calls for maintenance of effort in terms of support for Australian domestic capability, including supporting the Australian Astronomical Observatory and its capabilities. But this legislation that we are debating, uh, Deputy Speaker, proposes to offload the main government astronomical assets, the AAT near uh, Coonabarabran in New South Wales and the AAO instrumentation into, onto the Australian university sector. And this is really done ostensibly to save the budget $26 million over the Ford estimates. In reality, it's much, pretty much a sleight of hand. Moving the burden of maintaining these facilities from the Department of Innovation, Industry and Science onto entities funded by the Department of Education and Training. And this transition doesn't come without a cost. It's expected that a small number of jobs will be lost in the transition, four to five at the Anglo-Australian Telescope and up to another nine at the Northride Instrumentation Laboratories. There's some irony that at the time when this government is seeking to cut university funding by $2.2 billion over the next four years, it expects universities to stump up the cash to keep these key astronomy facilities <coughs> operational. We hope 
that they are able to remain operational because Australia has developed a long-standing and globally recognised expertise in astronomy, and we don't want to lose that leadership. We have some of the best skies in the world, as I said, for astronomical observation, and our continent faces 25 per cent of space. Many people have heard of the Northern Lights, otherwise not known as Aurora Borealis, but in our own southern skies we can bear witness to the wonders of Aurora Australis, the same phenomenon but in the southern hemisphere. This abundance of sky is not lost on Australians as we are a nation of keen amateur astronomers. Earlier this year the country was captivated with a super blue blood moon where we were treated to three lunar phenomena all at once, a blue moon or a second full moon in the same calendar month, a blood moon where the moon is in full eclipse causing the usually whitish moon to become red or a ruddy brown, and a supermoon where a full moon coincides with the closest distance that the moon reaches to Earth in its elliptic orbit. Social media lit up when this happened uh, at that night with people sharing their photos of the moon and those who had less ideal weather also posted about this, their disappointment that they could not actually see it. But everyone, of course, had an interest. Um, and it's not a one-off either. This, th we saw this at the ABC in partnership with the Australian <coughs> National University, led a Guinness World Record attempt for the most people stargazing recently, and this was to break the world record for the most people simultaneously observing the moon in the night sky through a telescope or binoculars. And it was broadcast on the ABC stargazing program live, which uh, has returned to our screens due to outstanding success last year. A real uh, demonstration of how much, how much Australians are engaged and passionate about science and particularly astronomy. And I would say that um, on that basis the, the evidence is pretty clear that Australians love astronomy. We have so many talented astronomers and we have many young people who look to the stars for inspiration. Yet with this bill we're, presented, we're presenting the community, the astronomical community, with a funding cliff that's been postponed. It's only been postponed and only affects our, uh, not only affects our current scientists but it also places a level of uncertainty uh, for any bright young mind that would look to the skies to help provide some answers for our place in the universe. In some senses we're hampering our ability to produce expertise. And even though Australian astronomy is world leading and inspires thousands of Australians through citizen science and activities like that annual ABC stargazing, um, it is not backed up, I think, by the federal government with respect to this bill. Providing a pathway where our scientists can have access to the best research infrastructure in the world is absolutely essential, but it should not come at the cost of outsourcing, outsourcing of existing infrastructure onto a university sector that is already copying a $2.2 billion cut from this coalition government. It's really an example, uh, Deputy Speaker, of the government uh, continuing to gut Australian science and the Department of Innovation, Industry and Science. I will say that we support this legislation but make clear a clear note of the cul-de-sac of uncertainty and the cuts that this government has led us to. And as I started, Deputy Speaker, uh, I talked about the fundamental questions that we ask when we look up into the night sky. Are we alone? What's out there? What are these wonders of the universe that we uh, dream about as kids and as adults? Astronomy is a very much a part of our lives because it helps us ask those perennial questions, those human questions about who we are and what our place in the universe is. And if I could uh, finish by actually giving you the um, well-known um, uh, farewell, live long and prosper. <laughs> I thank the member for Wills for his contribution.